introduction to showcast. Okay, until now we have learned it to process different products available in the GMC broadcast and in other dissemination mechanisms. And that's important to understand. Many of the files available in GeoNetcast are available in the cloud or in GRB systems, or you may use Python to download some of these files from the open servers provided by NOAA, for example, using the HTTP library, we have used it to download GFS data from the NOMAD server during the third and fourth days when we were learning how to process NWP data. And these data sets are available in formats that allows users to manipulate them and create their own plot, as we have seen, right? Um, however, after we are able to create this imagery, uh, we still need to find a way generate them routinely, right? And you also need to learn how to automatically process them when new files are available and only when new files are available. For example, in your stations, you receive Go 16 data every 10 minutes. Some products is every one hour. Some products are every 20 minutes, every four hours, daily. How do you know when they have arrived, right? How do you know that you need to trigger a script to process them, right? So we need to find a way to visualize these images. Apart from all of that, how to visualize these images in an interface, usually using a browser that allows us to make basic animations and other functionalities. Uh, uh, and uh, implementing this kind of integration uh, to provide images operationally, it's not easy. It's not trivial, right? Uh, you need to use several technologies and tools to make that happen. And you usually depend on different people from your staff, right? As you have seen in the presentation from Douglas, he's using several tools in the back end and the front end. And the, for the front end, the web, the, the web page for this set is another team that develops it, and Douglas developed the back end. So it's not trivial, right? So to make this process easier, a little bit easier, uh, this solution has been created, OK? And uh, in this presentation, we are going to see some of the challenges, uh, goals, a demonstration, and an overview of this very simple but very efficient tool. Uh, also, this tool is available in your ground station, uh, and it has been installed by EEC. Uh, during the fifth day, we have seen some of, of the products being visualized by it, as you're seeing here uh, on the right. And this is the station from Granada. However, uh, the version installed is not the latest version, uh, and you need to update it in the future. And a new update will be available soon, so I really recommend waiting a little bit more before you can update it, OK? Um, and in the reference slides available on Moodle in the complementary activity session, you see that the characteristics uh, uh, you see the characteristics of the many, many of the data access mechanisms and the files that are available in each one of these mechanisms. And we have seen that there are many possibilities uh, when it comes to data processing. And uh, we have seen many of the options available for visualizing satellite data. So here you have some of these data access mechanisms, uh, GRB, HRED, uh, HDR, NOAA class, Amazon, etc. We have here some of the libraries we have been exploring uh, during the training. RTP, NumP, Matplotlib, NetCDF4, MatPy, PyGrib, et cetera, GLOG, PyProj. And you have some visualization options, as you have seen during the fifth day, uh, I think. AWIPS, Makaidas, et cetera, right? Um, um, but the question is, right, how can we generate and visualize data operationally? We are receiving this data and we are no, and we know how to plot them with Python, but how can we generate and visualize data operationally, routinely? Um, for example, here at Enpe, in my division, we have different data access mechanisms available. Uh, and what arrives first is processed and uh, our developers working the interfaces as we're seeing here, right? Both 
the back end and front end of these interfaces to make the data available to our to our downstream users. Right? For example, this is our web page, uh, satellite.cptech.npay.br, right? Center for Weather Forecasting and Climate Studies. If you click here, you have the link to DSAT. If you click here, which is one of our tools, if you click here, you have another tool, which is called Sigma, right? For example, you have the wind fields here, and you have many uh, RGBs in, in the cylindrical equidistant projection, right? Uh, for example, ash or air mass, and many other images, right? Cloud classification, uh, radiation, fog, and many others, and wind vectors. And uh, this is created by the developers, right? Um, uh, however, in some cases, human and technological resources are not available to develop custom products and to develop uh, visualization interfaces. And that's where this tool could be useful for you, right? And, and Showcast stands for Simple HTML Operational Rocker for GeoNetcast Americas. And it has been created to provide a simple, yet powerful solution for operational data processing and visualization. And on the left here, we have the first version of this tool running in the GeoNetcast America's station here, the antenna, the receiver here, and it's another model. It's not the S300D in this case. Uh, this is the first version back in 2019, okay? Um, and the main goal of this solution is to provide, first, a free tool that can be customized and put to work without the need of an uh, advanced knowledge of programming and web development, right? And to provide a free tool that can be adapted to the available hardware, right? Um, but before seeing how, let's see some different types of satellite data users based on the experience gained in the last years, right? There are users uh, that want to use satellite processing schemes in the visualization tool, making the adjustments according to their needs. However, there are users that they are already experienced in web development and they just want to use scripts, right? Uh, for example, uh, Wayne, we have seen on, on the last day that he is processing very nice products already, right? Supposing that he do not have web pages to visualize it, he could use the solution to animate the, the, his images, okay? And there are users that create new adaptations and functions as we are going to see, okay? Um, and here we have some nice adaptation examples created by users. On the left, here is uh, an adaptation from the, here, the Hellenic National Meteorological Service from Greece. They have downloaded this tool, and they have adapted it. to process mainly Meteosat imagery, that is the imagery that they receive it there through UMED-CAS, you see here. Uh, and on the right, another adaptation created by the Brazilian National Weather Service, or IMAT, right? They have even changed the name of the tool to SAPIS, right? And that's totally okay. This is an open source tool, okay? Um, and we can make a quick demonstration, right? I have already demonstrated a few times during this training, but let's take a quick look again. Uh, our colleagues from El Salvador, William Abarca, and others, they have adopted this tool and they are generating many images routinely for their users and forecasters, right? Um, 
for example, they are visualizing 16 ABI bands, right? And they have uh, and they have subsected, right, the, the images to a very small region. This is probably three per five degrees, right, for El Salvador. And they have added a shape file with the provinces from their country, right? Um, and uh, for example, if you click here, you can easily animate it here. Remember that animation from day number four, from that assignment that we, we would be able to create animations for any time period? Here they are using the same scheme, right? Um, that, that demonstration where we seen uh, Hurricane Fiona, Hurricane, and the other hurricanes, okay? Um, so uh, they are visualizing RGB composites here. Those who, you know, we were learning, we have been learning since the second day. And here they have 20 options, right? Uh, air mass, ash, uh, cloud phase, day cloud phase, day land cloud that we have created today, and many others, right? true color. And uh, they convection, one from the challenge, right? And look how they are adding the interpretation as a legend. So when a user is looking at this image, he already knows what each color means. This is very nice, and it was made possible using Python, right? Um, they are visualizing uh, more than 15 derived products. Cloud top height, cloud top temperature, rainfall estimation, aerosol optical depth, stability indices, right? Land surface temperature, and many others, right? Sea surface temperature from globes, and many others. Um, Saharan air layer tracking, geo land data, right? You do not have any activity there right now, but they are visualizing that every 20 seconds. This is an animation every 20 seconds, but uh, you do not have any activity now, right? So I cannot demonstrate that now. Um, however, they also generate the same products or most of these products for a bigger region, for Central America, right? Like these ones here. With Python, you can uh, select which region you want to visualize, right? And we have some example notebooks in the demonstrations we have made using uh, Google Colab. So here they have increased this region. So they are generating different sectors, okay? Um, they are also visualizing these RGBs, right? For this bigger region. For example, here we have the cloud phase RGB created by uh, UMATSAT. Here we have, right? And I really like this RGB. You can really differentiate between uh, low level and, and high clouds um, and so on. They are visualizing, they are overlaying the US National Hurricane Center tracking over ABI images, like in this example here, right? Uh, they are visualizing new cap soundings from NOAA 20 here. Blend the TPW, right, for for El Salvador and for Central America. Uh, they're visualizing the advected layered precipitable water product from CIRA. Right. Okay. And many more products. Okay. Um, flood mapping products. Remember the flood mapping products that I have shown you a couple of days ago, the 
training from NOAA. They are plotting it here. And here you have uh, some pixels indicating possible floods, right? And you need to interpret based on the information provided by NOAA if these are floods or not. Okay. Uh, sea surface temperature, sea surface temperature anomaly and trend. Solar fuel concentration. From NOAA 20 or SUMI and uh, SPP. Vegetation products. Right? Fires, hotspots, NWP plots, as we have seen on the third day and fourth days, like here. Okay, everything being processed by this tool and visualized by this tool. Okay. Um, Just a moment. Forecast charts from NOAA for the Caribbean region and Central America. This is for the Eastern, Eastern Caribbean. And other alerts and warnings. Okay, tsunami warnings and much more. And this is the hotspots interface provided by these two. Okay, so if you go, for example, to this point and click here, you see that this is a hotspot detected by Go 16. Today at 6, 635, 645 UTC. And you can change the background image as well to check where it is. Okay, so this is the kind of thing uh, this tool is able to, is it capable to do. Okay, and all of that using this solution. Um, you may find an installation and configuration manual in the GNCA blog, and also download the latest version. Um, however, as I said, we should have an update soon, so I really recommend waiting a little bit, but you can see all the details of this tool in the blog. Here at documentation, GNC documentation, and download the manual of the solution. And you have all the details, downloading, directory structure, installing, basic configuration, advanced configuration, processing module, and so on. So you have a very nice guide, okay? Um, okay. And uh, basically, when you download it, you see a structure like this one with different directories and, and very similar to the structure of that assignment from day number four. Remember that? Where we have created animations from different events just, just by changing time and date. You have a very similar structure, a uh, very similar structure, but with more folders, right? So we have a uh, folder with color tables, guides, HTML, the installers, legends, logos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, and what this tool basically does is automating as much as possible everything we have learned during this training, right? Uh, for example, remember the procedure available in the blog to install the necessary tools to run scripts locally? It does that, but it is, does that in a much simpler way. Right, and all those tools and libraries are installed with a couple of clicks. If you double click here, which is a bat file inside the installer folder, it will install all those tools and libraries necessary to run Python. Okay, and after a few minutes, you just need to run the installer, a uh, prompt will pop up and you click yes. And after a few minutes, uh, our environment will be automatically created. Okay. Um, however, you still need some understanding of scripts, right? As you have seen during this training, because users need to configure basically three script files. 
Once you select after how many days uh, data you'll be deleted, once you select um, the product that this tool you, you process, and want to tell the system where the data is being received, right? And for example, to configure where the data is being received, you just need to set this variable here, ingest dir, right? As it has been configured in the fast client, so the system will automatically detect when a new file arrives. Okay, we have seen in your stations, um, Here. Um, let me open a terminal here. In your stations, the receive directory is in cd slash ess slash uh, data slash satellite slash and fast. Here you have all these receiving folders, right? We have been uh, investigating. And what EEC basically did to install this the solution in your machines, uh, they have uh, configured this variable here with EC slash data slash uh, satellite slash fast. Okay. Um, and to configure uh, um, for each product, you can configure how he wants to process these files. For example, go 16, band 13. Do, we have, do I want to process it? True or false? True. I want to process it. Um, which script should I use? This one, process G bands Y, right? For which region? Oh, minus 63 to minus 35 as longitudes and minus 35 to minus 10 as latitudes. Remember the extent variable that we have been using? Right? And which resolution? Two kilometers in this case. So this is, you have one of these for each one of the products, right? Uh, and after configuring these initial parameters, we start processing the files automatically. As they are received, users need to double click one of these two icons here. For example, if you're using Windows, you just double click show cast start Windows, right? And if you're losing, using Linux, you just need to run this shell script here, right? And then you do that, some terminal windows will pop up and the files will be processed automatically, right? And users um, can visualize um, the plots by clicking at this icon here, which will redirect you to the open page, to the first page, this one. Uh, and the plots will be generated as we have seen uh, in the examples from El Salvador. So they have configured the tool and they have put this tool in a web server. So the, imagers are, the, the images are available online, okay? And currently uh, the system supports the GoZ stands, RGB composites, derived products, GLM, um, those West imagery, Meteosat imagery, data from polar satellites like GCON, um, NUCAP, blended rain rate, blended PPW, blended ozone, uh, advected layered precipitable water, food mapping products, ocean products, sea ice products, vegetation products, hotspots, and WP analysis, warnings, watches, and much more, right? and uh, everything processed with Python. However, with a little bit of automation, make things easier for you, okay? And if you know Python, as we have learned during this training, you will be able to completely change the solution according to your needs and add your own scripts and add your own products, right? 
um, we access your extensions remotely here. Um, um, this is the, the visualization interface. Sorry. And here you have the product, right? Some of the product. However, you also have a terminal here. And if you look at this terminal, you see that it's automatically rolling, right? Um, and as you may see it, it is automatically detecting new files that are being received and processing these files using scripts, the ones you have created during this training, okay? For example, if we go to the interface and click here at GLM and GLM density and open the animation window, right? Here you have the animation window and then it's the same interface used in the assignment of the day four, from day four, right? You can click here and animate, right? The DLM densities in this example, right? It's a little bit slow because I'm remotely accessing the station, okay? But this is an image for today, right? Uh, and remember I mentioned that you could change your logo just by changing the PNG file in the logos folder and that's what EC did. Here's their, here's their logo, okay? So that's basically how it works, right? It's the same thing we have seen during the training. However, it's a little bit of automation, okay? Um, I have added some reference slides here related to configuration. So you may check them in the future on how to configure parallel processing, uh, how to use your own logos. If you check here in the interface from El Salvador, they are using the same interface. You see here? Uh, and they have their own logos here. Here, here's their logo, right? So that's how that's how they did that. Um, how to add your own labels? You see that here. GPY. This is a custom label. And it's very easy to add your custom labels using this uh, tool, okay? Um, how to add your own legends, right? For example, for the cloud phase product, you have this water super cold makes it a nice cloud phases, right? So it's possible uh, for the derived motion wings, each level is a legend. So it's possible to add these legends in your plots, right? Um, how, to, how to configure the products you want to process. Um, how to configure the distribution of your workstations. Here only one for processing and visualization. Here's two, one for processing and one for visualization. One for processing, visualization and storage and cloud and so on, okay? Another nice capability of this tool is the ability to download data directly from the cloud because it also has a cloud module called cloud, showcast cloud, right? How to select the data you want to download from the cloud. Uh, if you want to download data from Amazon or Unidata as we have seen and visualize the data you, want, you have downloaded from the cloud, right? And that's basically it. Uh, here we have some screenshots of the latest version, available version 2.5.1. And here's the history, a version history. Um, this project started in 2019, right? And since then, it had 11 updates. Uh, and here we have some pros and cons. As pros, it is simple, 
as I have said, uh, it's what we have seen during this training, however, with a little bit of automation, right? It works with GeoNet Cast America, GRB, data from the cloud, and any other data reception mechanism that has the same files that is configured to process, right? Um, it is relatively easy to start. It can be used as a starting point for your own processing scheme. And for cons, maybe for some users, it may be too simple. You are basically visualizing animated PNGs, okay? And uh, given the simplicity of the current architecture, it's not easy to add more powerful uh, functionalities like, you know, visualizing pixel values by moving the mouse cursor and similar. Development is limited on a best effort basis. And some of these scripts can be optimized to make processing faster. However, it's an option and it's available for you. And it's a nice starting point, especially if you already know how to process your own images as we have seen, okay? Uh, and of course we have Proteus, as you see here in our machines. Let me close this window. We also have Proteus developed by the vendor of the machine. Here you have the scans, here you have the products, and if you double click at one of these products and select load product, the product will be open in a new window. And you can have multiple windows in your workstations up to four monitors. And you can open multiple windows from Proteus and configure which monitor will show each product and you have a very powerful tool in your hands, okay? Uh, so Proteus is much more powerful. However, uh, if you want um, to generate images processed with Python and automate the process to make the process simpler, Showcast is a tool for you, okay? So this is a basic introduction to Showcast that I would like to show you. And these are already installed in your workstations. You can update it in the future and change it and adapt it according to your needs and make these links available to your downstream users, downstream users, okay? Okay, um, now let's see the last presentation from this training, right? Session number four, general GNCA data processing. And if you have any questions, just send your questions in the chat box, okay?